don't be afraid. I'm not going to start from the beginning of my life. I am. I, uh, I'll start from the beginning of the World War II, when Germany attacked Poland. And I don't know whether you realize that while all, nearly all countries in Europe were falling within days, Warsaw defended itself for a whole month. But during that month, there was no delivery of food, of fresh food. So I have to admit it that the Germans, or you know, when they entered Warsaw, they organized soup kitchens for the population. People were standing in queues with their uh, bowls, uh, bowl. yes, it does. <laughs> and little boys, children of our neighbors, little, mostly boys, children that we used to play with in the, in the streets of Warsaw. They didn't know any German at all, but they knew one word only, and that was Jude, which means Jew. And they were running between the queues and pointing out, Jude, Jude, Jude. And Jude, the Jews were expelled from the queues because Jews, Jews don't have to eat. That was the first sign of the persecution of Jews. Then they, they, started to, they tried to kill our dignity. They would, they would, we called it catching. They would catch young, the young girls, let's say of 11, 12, 13 years, order them to take off their panties and wash the pavement with the panties. It was a terrific spectacle for all around us. For, it, it wasn't funny to us at all. I, uh, my parents got a job in, uh, there was a conglomerate, conglomerate of factories in the ghetto. And um, I, I happened, and my parents happened to be at Schultz. There was Schultz, Stebbins, and others. They were conglomerates of factories like, like uh, clothing factory, like leather factory. Uh, like um, ammunition factory, and there was a laundry. My f parents got a job in the laundry, but they couldn't get, there were not enough jobs, there were not enough jobs there, so they couldn't get one for me. And, but I stayed with my parents, but I was there illegally. Whatever they promised was never, is, was always a deception, there was no, sure things at all. As they promised that people that were working for the Germans, for the German war machine will be secure, they were not. And I don't know whether there was funny sense of humor or whatever it was, they organized so-called actions, actionen, when they were coming and, and now they've got people gathered in those factories, you know, in, in groups, so they, it was much easier to, to, there was an action, and I was hired, I have to explain, an action looked like that. They would come and they would make a selection. And you never know who was the subject of the selection, because you wouldn't say that today they were taking young ones and tomorrow old ones, or today blondes and tomorrow the brunettes, well, women or women. Young boys, only <laughs> freshly in the army, they would be the ones, the, the lords of our life or death. According to the whim, they would make a selection, this one to the left, this one to the right, this one to the left, this one to the right. My mother was sent to the left. My father was left. Me, not not being, not not being a proper worker for in this in in the laundry, I was hiding under this. That was a colossal warehouse, like like those, and full of of bloody uniforms. 
and I was hiding under all this pile of uniforms with an elderly Jewish gentleman. When we came out, the action was finished, we came out, my mother was gone. Uh, anyway, I took my mother's place in the laundry, and so I was getting my mother's ratio of food, but the old man, his whole family was gone, and he, he didn't have any food coming. So my father divided the three portion of food that, two portions of food that we were getting into three, and the portion was one bowl of, of cabbage soup. If you were lucky, you, were the, you could find a leaf of cabbage in it. If you were extremely lucky, you could even find a piece of potato in it. So that was that. And I can't remember now whether it was 100 or 150 grams of bread per person. So these two portions my father divided into three. And why I'm telling you about that, you'll find out in a few minutes. Next holiday was Yom Kippur. And I was already marching with my father because I was already a working girl. And I was sent to the right. My father's was sent to the left. I didn't want to leave without my father, without my parents. So I ran after my father, but they were, they all had those pitches, pitches for whips, you know, yeah. And I got whipped and I can't remember even how I got back into the laundry. But my father was gone, and the old man was gone. But I, I was, I didn't want to go because at that time my brother was still alive, and I thought that it was not fair. He was in a different part of the ghetto, and I'll go to the, uh, and I'll part, cross to the Aryan side, trying to save me, and here he stays in the ghetto, sentenced to death. But I had to tell him about it, so I, there was not, a, not it, an easy way to cross from, to go to get from my place to where my brother was working. I told him about this offer, and my brother said that it is our duty. We, which, whichever way we can to try to survive, because we saw that everybody will perish. First of all, somebody will have to tell my sister if she's still alive, and she was deported by Russians to Siberia, right? so we didn't know whether she was still alive or not. But somebody has to tell my sister what's happening, what happened to her family, and somebody will have to tell the world what's happening here, because no one will believe it. So I was supposed to be, if I managed to survive, it was not such a sure thing, even on the Aryan side, that uh, I was supposed to be the, the eyewitness. And uh, my father, my brother, fell in the Jewish uprising, and I'm here to tell you're free, you can come out. You know, all this time, I didn't cry. We didn't cry at all, because, like, for instance, you know, when I lost my parents, and I lost my siblings, and I lost my boyfriend, and my friends, and everybody I ever knew, we didn't cry because we waited for our turn next. But when I heard that I was free and I can leave, I sat there and I cried. Because in the whole world, there was no one waiting for me, no one to go out to.